Hey, so we had this video, how good were the Lob City Clippers actually? Growing up, I watched this team play Blake Griffin, Chris Paul. It was a great time, but they never won a ring. So we're going to find out why. From 1970 to 2011, the LA Clippers were the laughing stock of the NBA. They made the playoffs just seven times in 40 years. With seven times in 40 years. Oh, that's a great start to the video. The LA Clippers seven times in 40 years. I didn't know it was that bad for them only two playoff series and were by far the worst franchise in the NBA. They were the San Diego Clippers before the LA Clippers. They had Bob McAdoo. I wonder if they're gonna mention Bob McAdoo. Elite ball uh, knowledge moment part 77 for me now. But then they drafted one of the most athletic power forwards ever and traded for the best Blake Griffin, man, you had to retire early. Lob City was born. However, despite all the highlights and the promise of winning a championship, they failed. So, just how good was Lob City actually? The Clippers finished the 2009 season with just 19 wins and 63 Baron losses Davis. and were tied for the second worst record in the NBA. The Clippers had an 18% chance to get the first overall pick, but after years of losing, Lady Luck was finally on their side and they won the right to pick first in the upcoming 2009 draft. The number one pick in the 2009 NBA draft was made by the Los Angeles Clippers. And even though the 09 draft class was filled with great guards such as- In my opinion, bro, the 09 draft class might be a top three draft class of all time. I know that's crazy, but think, Steph Curry, uh, you got Blake Griffin, James Harden, DeMar DeRozan, Drew Holiday, you got Ricky Rubio. Uh, I think Hashim the Beat was the only real bust out of that draft class. As Steph Curry, James Harden, DeMar DeRozan, and Drew Holiday, the Clippers' choice was easy. With the first pick in the 2009 NBA draft, Oklahoma, the right? Los Angeles Clippers select Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin just came off one of the most dominant seasons in NCAA history. Where he and, and the crazy thing is, man, unfortunately, he was, it's crazy. Like, this man had a whole NBA career. It was the last college basketball, college hoops game that EA dropped, NCAA basketball 10, I believe. That was the last one. This man, Blake Griffin, had an entire NBA career, and they still haven't dropped a new college basketball game. They got to do it eventually, bro. Now's the time. Averaged 22.7 points, 14.4 rebounds, and 2.3 assists per game, breaking a ton of rebounding records. Strong as an ox, with big hands, freakish athleticism, toughness, and an impeccable work ethic. W.O. Bino, man. -hustling He's a dog. muscling every opponent that came his way. Even though his offensive game was unpolished, Blake was like a wrecking ball, and he often made other college big men look like little kids, winning all the major awards for Collegiate Player of the Year. Really? I knew he was good in college. I didn't know he was like, like that, like that. Okay, we got the James Naismith. We have the Vince Carter Award, I believe. I'm just capping. I don't know what that is. I've never seen this one. Blake immediately proved his class in the NBA Summer League, winning the MVP. But then, Damn. a disaster. Hey! No! In the final preseason game, Griffin landed awkwardly after a dunk, resulting in a stress fracture of his kneecap. After several weeks of hesitancy, the doctors what? opted for surgery. And it's so crazy to think that happened in his preseason game in the rookie season, right? Off a dunk. You would think that, you know, when he comes back for the rest of his career, he won't be as crazy of a dunker. He won't try it. He'll get PTSD and not want to get injured again. That man doubled down and said, nah, I'm going to dunk even harder. Um, that, that was an awkward landing, though. I want to see it again. Disaster. Like, it would look like a normal landing to me. I've done that multiple times on, on the eight foot rim. In the final preseason game, Griffin landed awkwardly after a dunk, resulting in a stress fracture of his kneecap. After several weeks of hesitancy, the doctors opted for surgery, and Griffin was ruled out for the season. Without their prized first pick, LA had another losing season with 29 wins and 53 so losses. They got a good pick in the again. In 10 draft, they had the eighth overall pick, Eric Gordon? which they used on Al Farouk Aminu. Miss oh, Al Farouk Aminu. That's a throwback. Damn, if y'all played 2K11 my career, bro, and y'all know Al Farouk Amino. He is, that was one of my, he's like the most randomest player you could think of. Al Farouk Amino. They could have had Gordon Hayward that draft. Missing out on Gordon Hayward and Paul George, who got- Paul George, oh my God. Paul George and Blake Griffin and Chris Paul. Dog, I didn't even know it was like that. Selected ninth and 10th. However, when the 2010 season started, Griffin was finally healthy and quickly showed why he was one of the most talented players to ever suit up for the Clippers. Blake scored 20 points and grabbed 14 rebounds in his oh, NBA wow. debut. And oh, in his wow. 14th career game against the Knicks, he finished with 44 points. Whoa! 44 points as a rookie? 
Hold on, hold on. In his NBA debut, and in his 14th career game against the Knicks. In his 14th career game, what? That's like the first month still, the second month in. 44 points. He finished with 44 points. I know it was the second year. Ben Simmons type beat. Assists. That game marked the beginning of a 27-game streak where he finished with a double-double, the longest rookie double-double streak since 1968. Griffin was selected Damn. by the coaches for the All-Star game, becoming the first rookie since Tim Duncan with that accomplishment. He also appeared in the slam dunk contest, where he absolutely dominated the competition. So did he peak early then? Because I remember this. This was like his first or second season, right? So he peaked early, like at all the hype. He had a good start to his career, bro. Like he didn't have to wait multiple years to get that spotlight. That man had it right away. Highlighted by his dunk over a car. 2011, right? That was weak. I could have done it. I could have done the same thing, bro. Bleak appeared in all 82 games, averaging 22 points, 12 rebounds, and four assists, becoming the first rookie to average at least 20 points and 10 rebounds. What a since dog. Alton I didn't know he was this good. 2000. Griffin was voted Rookie of the Month in all six months of the regular season, and he became just the third player in NBA history to be voted Rookie of the Year unanimously. However, despite all the accolades, the Clippers barely improved, finishing with the third worst record in the conference. Damn. But then, in the offseason, after the NBA commissioner famously vetoed Chris Paul's trade to the Lakers, CP3 still ended up in Los Angeles, but with the Clippers. The less successful LA team gave up Eric Gordon, Chris Kamen, Al Farouk Aminu, and a first round pick for Paul, which was. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, damn, wow, wow. Uh, wow, sorry. It was a worse deal for New Orleans than what the Lakers offered, but still, Chris Paul became a Clipper. And this changed everything. On top of being a point god and an uber-efficient pick-and-roll savant who could find teammates with his eyes closed, CP3 was also the best defensive point guard in the NBA, who led the Dirty league player. in steals three times during his six-year stint with New Orleans. When the 2012 season started, Paul led the Clippers' fast-paced offense, and because he had high-flying finishers at the rim, he often threw spectacular alley-oop dunks to Griffin or DeAndre when is DeAndre Jordan, Jordan coming to the picture? Earned the Clippers a new nickname. Oh, this was horrible. The Brandon Knight one, bro. I remember because I'm a Pistons fan growing up watching this. Brandon Knight was my guy until he got publicly humiliated, man. This was this was horrible. When is DeAndre Jordan coming to the picture, though? You should have mentioned it in the video. Lob City. Both CP and Blake were named to the All-Star team and All-NBA teams, becoming the first Clipper players to be named All-NBA since the franchise moved to Los Angeles in 1984. The Clippers Fire. made the playoffs, which was only their second playoff appearance in 15 years, where Paul and Griffin led the team to victory over the hard-nosed, grit and Damn, who's that? Grizzlies. It was just the third series win in franchise history, but immediately in the second round, LA was brought down to earth as they got swept by the Spurs. The season was still viewed as a success, considering the long playoff drought, the fact that the team was newly assembled, and the youth of Blake and Jordan. However, yeah, for the 2013 season, the expectations grew, and the Clippers looked the part. They won a franchise record 56 games, which was the first time they ever surpassed 50 wins in a season, with CP no and Blake leading the charge, alongside proven vets like Chauncey Billups. You got Chauncey Billups, Matt Barnes, and that Karan Butler. They had a squad, man. I know, I know this because of the classic 2K team. Matt Barnes, Karan Butler, and Jamal Crawford. Jamal all led Crawford. The NBA in steals and finished fourth in the MVP voting making first team all nba and all defense while blake made the all nba second team and the play damn yo how did he not break his back on this landing all nba and all Hold on. defense while hey that blake man blake griffin flew right NBA here that man was in mid air landing on his back how do you not like get paralyzed from and that i mean maybe i wonder if, if you have a really strong back like if you hit back day every day and you land on your back like that if you don't even feel it because someone like me, bro, I probably wouldn't even feel it. And all defense, while Blake made the All-NBA second team. And the playoffs have started well for LA. They won the first two games at home against Memphis, and everybody believed they would defeat the Grizzlies again. But then a collapse. What happens? Due to a lack of shooting on the team, especially from Blake, who couldn't buy Oh, they didn't have JJ Reddick at the time. The Clippers struggled to score, losing four consecutive games, and their season was over. Because of poor rotations, lack of tactical adjustments, that and man. questionable in-game decisions. Hey, his name is Coach Vinny Del Negro. That's his name, man. Elite Ball Knowledge Moment Part 78. Oh, my God. Back to back in one video. fired Coach Vinny Del Negro. Yep. Who was probably the worst coach in the NBA at the time. Time for Doc Rivers. And in his place came Doc Rivers, an NBA champion with the 2008 Celtics, who immediately brought improvement. 
DeAndre Jordan started playing more minutes, which solidified the team's defense and rebounding. And Blake started shooting more jump shots, becoming a pick-and-pop threat. J.J. Redick was the biggest player addition to help the yep. Clippers spread the floor. And now, L.A. looks like a serious contender. They improved their franchise record to 57 wins and had the best offensive rating in the NBA. Blake and DJ destroyed rims across the league. This was, this, was peak NBA, this was peak NBA to me, bro, right here. The they should have won a ring CP3. right here. And their big three looks like the best trio in the NBA. They were. Outside of LeBron, Wade, and Bosch oh, yeah. in Miami. Griffin was third in MVP voting, while CP was seventh. No Paul way. led the NBA in steals and assists, and DeAndre Jordan was the league leader in rebounds, finishing third in the Defensive Player of the Year voting. On top of everything, Jamal Crawford also won the sixth. This was a of the squad year for real. How did they fumble? Like they were finally out of the Lakers' shadow. But amid their most successful season in franchise history, there was also a massive scandal, which had nothing to oh, do with right. basketball. On April oh, that racist ass owner, man. Don, was it, what was his name, Don Cheadle or Don Nelson? No, what was his name? Donald Sterling. Yeah, that guy, man, he ruined it. All the momentum they had, that man, they had to leak it. That, I wonder if that stuff didn't get leaked, wait a couple of years, leak it like after they win a championship. You know, it was just horrible timing. April 25th, 2014, TMZ Sports released a recording of a conversation between Sterling and his mistress, Vanessa Stiviano, where Sterling was saying that he didn't want Stiviano to bring black people to Clippers games. That's insane! What? That means you can't even bring your own players, dumbass. Like, I don't, I don't understand that racism, bro. What exactly did Donald Sterling say? I don't want my woman around black basketball players. Me neither. After his comments went public, the NBA banned Sterling for life, giving him a $2.5 million fine. That's it. Forcing him to sell the team. I am banning Mr. Sterling Oh yeah. For hey. life. Hey, Adam Silver, that was his welcome to the league moment for Adam Silver. As soon as he became commissioner, that was his big alpha play right there. As soon as he got in, he set the league on notice, bro. He's not, he's not one to mess with. Any association with the Clippers organization or the NBA. And despite all the turmoil and controversy surrounding their team, during which the Clippers players considered boycotting game four of the first round against the Warriors, they decided to play, even though they lost the game in a blowout. Bad However, distraction. behind 23 points and six rebounds on average from Blake and 17 points and nine assists from CP, the Clippers eventually defeated Steph Curry and the Warriors in seven games. Oh, they did. Oh, they did, that's right. Wait, who did they lose to, the Spurs? And their second round matchup against OKC was just as nail biting, with the Thunder and Clippers trading punches and exchanging leads. This right here, in my opinion, is the best matchup that you could ask for. This is like your dream NBA matchup. The, those Thunder and those Clippers, that's the best matchup you could ask for, bro. Of the series. Both so many teams stars. Won two games. And game five was another close contest, but it looked like it would go the Clippers' way. Paul with the jumper. Yes. Chris As Paul's midi is disgusting. Lead with 49 seconds remaining. But then Chris Paul committed two costly turnovers. Oh, yeah, that's right. He sold. And fouled Westbrook on a three-point attempt. They got the re, right? Oh, he got fouled? That was a foul? Oh, it's a foul. Yo, Westbrook, I remember this game because I remember that KD was wide open. Let me see if he was open this part. I think he was and wide open. Westbrook on a three-point attempt. Uh, Maybe he should have passed it. I don't think that was a good play for Westbrook. I feel like you want the ball in Kevin Durant's hand at that time. You got bailed out, bro. You can see Durant to his reaction. Look, look, look. He's watched Durant the whole time. He's like, no way you took that. Okay. Yeah. The Thunder escaped with a 105-104 victory in what That's was a generational the fumble by CP3. CP3's career. It's me. Everything that happened at the end is on me. The Clippers had their chances in Game 6, but once again they lost their cool in the clutch, and the Thunder advanced. However, despite failing to make the conference final, the Thunder, man, I just wish Durant didn't lead the Thunder because if they didn't lead the Thunder, the Clippers still would have had a chance the following years. For the third consecutive season, the Clippers' main players were still young and in their prime. Paul and J.J. Redick were 29, no way. DJ was 26, and Blake was just 25 years old. Barnes and Jamal Crawford were 34, but they were still very 
very capable, and the Clippers believed that with continuity and a bit of luck, they could finally go all the way. For the 2015 season, Griffin further improved his shooting and all-around game. When he first came to the NBA, Blake was a brute finisher, and his main strengths were agility, explosiveness, and a soft touch around the basket. As a rookie, Blake shot just 25% on his attempts outside the paint. Yikes. But in the 2015 season, this number improved to 48%. Even Whoa, 48% from three? What did he take, like 10 threes? Even though his jumper was robotic and slow as hell, Griffin shot Super 40% ugly. on his mid-range attempts. He wasn't a mid-range assassin like Chris Paul or KD, but he was good enough to keep the defenses honest and force them to close out on him, which then opened his driving lanes and created passing opportunities that weren't there. When 2K15, he was Blake Griffin was a dog, Blake bro. averaged a career-high 5.3 assists per game. His free throw percentage rose to a very respectable 73%, and the Clippers got another shot creator outside of Chris Paul. CP3 still led the NBA in assists that season, but Griffin's improvement allowed him to spend more time off the ball, resulting in a career-high efficiency, as Paul was very close to shooting 50, 40, 90 for the season. DeAndre Paul Jordan a also dog, man. DeAndre every Jordan, bro, I think he was in the MVP voting this time. He was All-NBA first team, I remember. I think he was in the MVP voting, too. Averaging a league-leading 15 rebounds per game, as well as 71% shooting from the field, the second-best field goal percentage in NBA history. Woo! DJ made the first-team all defense, just like Chris Paul, who also got named to the All-NBA First Team, while Blake made the third team. J.J. Redick also played the best basketball of his life, averaging 16 points per game and making a career-high 44% of his three-pointers. Just like the me. were firing on all cylinders, once again finishing the season with the best offensive rating in the league. And it looked like this was finally going to be their year. But in the first round of the playoffs, a tall task awaited the defending champion San Antonio Spurs. Yo, Chris Paul got a game winner. I remember. It seemed like the Clippers were in trouble as the Spurs held a 3-2 lead in the series with the upcoming Game 6 in San Antonio. However, thanks to 26 and 12 from Blake and 19 points and 15 assists from Paul, the Clippers Yo, this Game seven, 7 was and insane. Then, in the deciding contest, a disaster. Chris Paul injured his hamstring in the first quarter, and it was a question whether he could continue the game. But Paul persevered and played through the injury in what was maybe the best game of his career. CP3 hit 9 of his 13 shots, including 5 of 6 for 3, and a game-winning floater over this Right here, this floater was the insane. Series. The pump fake, right? Right there. He just threw it up, and I was like, no way this. I remember watching it live. I was like, no way it's gonna go in. And then Blake Griffin, I thought was gonna kill himself on that on that putback attempt. Blake Griffin is just wilding, bro. Like, what are you doing? Look at that. What are you doing, bro? Relax. Chill out. <laughs> Blake was excellent too, with a 24-point triple double and it seemed like the Clippers had finally matured and had a championship yeah, the Warriors came In the second round, ah, LA took a 3-1 lead against the Rockets, winning game three by 25 and game four by 33 points. However, in game five, the Rockets outclassed the Clippers, winning by 21 points. Oh. But in game six, the Clippers bounced back at home, holding a 19-point lead in the third quarter and a 12-point lead with eight minutes to go. They it looked like it? the Clippers would finally advance to the first conference finals in franchise history, and they everybody did. was already getting their popcorn ready for the clash between the Clippers and the Warriors. But then, a complete meltdown and one of the biggest choke jobs in NBA history. With James Harden on the bench, the Rockets outscored the Clippers 40-15 to in the fourth quarter, led what? by a combined 29 points from Corey Brewer and Josh Smith, Josh two Smith. players who came off the bench. Oh, it was Josh. I remember this game. Josh Smith all of a sudden wanted to be good when he didn't want to do it in Detroit. I don't like Josh Smith, bro. Bench. The Clippers shot an abysmal 4 for 22 in the fourth with just five rebounds and one assist. And it seems like they never recovered from that fiasco. In game seven, the Rockets led the entire game. And no once again, way. The I forgot about went this. Down in flames. And the Houston Rockets had an impressive win here on their home floor. Despite their big three playing fairly well the entire series, the Clippers' role players failed them in this series, especially Jamal Crawford and Matt Barnes, who took a lot of shots but made just 34%, including a horrible 23% for three. For the 2016 season, the Clippers retained their key players, apart from Barnes, who was replaced by Jeff Green, and vets such as Paul Pierce, Josh Smith, Lance Stevenson, Josh Smith. 
They got cooked by Josh Smith and said, we're going to sign you. Lance Stevenson, yo, that's the name I haven't seen in forever. He, he was hilarious with Indiana. Luke Ba'amute, who also joined the team to bolster the bench. However, their success was hampered by injuries and the suspension of Blake Griffin, who was out for six weeks because he injured his hand while punching a member of the Clippers staff. What? This incident was the first public sign of trouble in the locker room as the Clippers' chemistry started to deteriorate. Overall, Blake missed 47 games of the season, but he was- Hey, so it's safe to say that James Harden ruined this team, right? Like the Rockets, James Harden, like if, 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 if the Clippers won that game six and game seven and they went to play the Warriors, we never got to see that. We never got to see that Warriors and Clippers. Able to come back before the start of the first round of the playoffs against Portland. And then if the Clippers beat the Warriors just one time, that could have changed NBA history. They could have been in the finals against LeBron. LeBron gets the easy chip. Oh my God. Even though it was painfully obvious that Blake was still nursing a quad injury and wasn't at 100%, the Clippers still comfortably won the first game. man, Blake Griffin, bro, he's trying to die the way he plays. The Why does he land like, like, like he doesn't know how to the land? Every time. These are the harshest won landings. The first two games. Portland won game three, but in game four, the Clippers' season was over. Who the hell is this guy in the middle? Is that who I think it is? Is that, uh... Is that Pablo Prigioni? Oh, no way I pulled out of my bag, bro. Ooh. Hey, if that's Pablo Prigioni, I know ball for real. That's the insane pull. Hold on. I'm gonna dab myself up real quick, bro. That was insane. Pablo Prigioni. Even though they were still playing. Because in the same game, Chris Paul broke his hand and Blake tore his unrecovered quad. Without their oh. two best players, the writing was on the wall. And another season went down the drain. For the 2017 season, the Clippers didn't make any notable additions, keeping the same core players together for a fifth straight season. But as the league moved towards the pace and space era, the Clippers still played old school basketball with Ooh. two traditional big men. And it play. seemed like their championship window had closed. Doc Rivers might be the most assist coach of all time then. Especially if the Sixers this year don't do good with Paul George and, uh, and beating Maxi. You know, Doc Rivers might be the most overrated coach of all time. But despite Blake and CP each missing 21 games of the season, the Clippers still won 51 games, surpassing the 50-win threshold for the fifth season in a row. In the playoffs against Utah, LA narrowly lost game one, but bounced back to win games two and three. However, that second win came at a hefty price, as Blake Griffin went down with a toe injury and was ruled out for injury. the remainder of the playoffs. Without Huffing Blake, up, man. LA managed to win one more game, but they lost the series and got knocked out of the playoffs again. It was clear that this team couldn't stay together anymore. And in the offseason, the Clippers decided to trade Chris Paul to Houston, unwilling to offer him another max deal. Desperate not to lose both superstars, the Clippers gave Blake Griffin a five-year, $173 million Jeez. contract. They even organized a fake jersey retirement for Griffin, convincing him that he'll be a Clipper for life and that they'll... That stuff is insane. Thank God that whoever did that, uh, the the Steve Ballmer dude, thank you, bro, because you pissed him off so much he came to my city and he had a good year in Detroit. Can't Build even hate. Championship team around him. It was a jersey retirement ceremony and then Sandra Day saying rise up so it was like one of the craziest things I've, <laughs> I've seen even though he cringed at the jersey retirement Blake didn't cringe at the money so he decided to stay but when the season started it was clear that the plan was not working and that the clippers weren't even a playoff team let alone a contender after just 33 games and a few months after they told him he'd be a clipper for life the clippers traded blake griffin yes Detroit, sir one of my favorite days of all time here in this news Bob city it was a six-year stretch filled with memorable highlights, plenty of dunks, and unprecedented success for a franchise that had never won anything. Lob City made the Clippers relevant for the first time. And Lob City Clippers, man. Hey, this this is so sad. It really is James Harden and the Rockets that, that caused this. It was that and then just untimely injuries. This team was insane. It's, it really sucks that they couldn't work out, bro. Hey, I don't think we'll ever see something like that again. That might, this might be the best team of all time to never make the finals, man. Comment down below what y'all think, man. What do, you, what do you think? Are you a Clippers fan? But that's it for today, man. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.